Hi everyone, I'm Eartha and after posting the video on your financial expectations as you study here in Canada or Calgary in particular, I received some messages and comments regarding job opportunities, taxes, and possibility of earning your uh, tuition fee as you uh, study and work at the same time. So I'm here to share some insights with you regarding those uh, topics. If you plan to work as you study in Canada, you have to satisfy several requirements. So one being a full-time student in a designated learning institution. Second would be uh, you studying for more than six months, which leads to a certificate, a diploma, or a degree. You have to start studying already and you have a SIN or the social insurance number. You can work as a part-time student only when you're in your last term and you are not required to take a full course load to complete your program or when you are a full-time student throughout your studying in Canada up until your last term. An international student can only work for 20 hours a week. However, there is a temporary mandate from November 15, 2022 until December 31, 2023 that an international student can work for more than 20 hours if they meet certain criteria or certain requirements. If you are working remotely and your employer is outside Canada, as long as it meets the requirements under your student permit, that would be permitted according to the article from um, the Canada page. <laughs> and it will not be counted as part of your 20 hours uh, per week. During your program's official break, you can work for more than 20 hours or full time. However, you have to confirm with your academic advisor or program chair when your official break is. Because in my college and in my program, our official break falls in uh, spring and summer. However, a friend of mine who is studying in a different institution, their program break uh, is during fall. So you have to make sure and confirm. You can work in campus unlimitedly as an international student. However, you have to take note that opportunities in campus are quite limited and sometimes campus opportunities offers only limited hours. I suppose that is to ensure that you are still having time to study and excel with your academics. Since those things are already out of the way, <laughs> uh, I wanted to share with you uh, my earnings. So this is uh, actual numbers, and this is what I actually earned when I was working for 20 hours with the minimum wage pay. Before I share the numbers with you, I would like you to know that these are based on my personal experience and not each situation or not every person has the same experience as I have. <laughs> so my laptop is here. So if I look this way, please know that I'm looking at my laptop and I have my payslip open. So let's get into the numbers. <laughs> Working for 40 hours with a rate of $15 hourly, you're expecting a $600 compensation. And during my time, I have a vacation pay that is paid every um, salary. So that is $24, giving me a gross um, earnings of $624 bi-weekly. So every uh, pay, there are some deductions that includes um, federal tax, CPP, and EI. So CPP is a Canadian pension plan. 
that is similar to SSS in the Philippines. And EI is unemployment insurance. So EI is usually you can have that or you can be granted an EI. If in any case you all of a sudden got laid off or you lost your income. So that is um, EI. And these are deductions that you should expect every day. So with the 624 uh, gross earnings, you are expecting um, zero federal tax, <laughs> apparently. A CPP of $27.90 and an EI of $9.86, giving you a total deduction of $37.76. So in total, uh, you are expecting a net pay of $586.24 by annually or a uh, $1,172.48 monthly. If you've seen my previous video, on your financial expectation as you come here in Canada, you would understand or you would realize that $1,172 would not get you anywhere with the current cost of living right now. It would be very difficult for you to also set aside funds for your tuition fee if you are earning a minimum wage and you are working for 20 hours weekly and you are alone or there's only one stream of income. So I would advise that before coming here in Canada, it would be very helpful if you already know where to get your funds for your tuition fee because that would not, so that it won't add up on your stress because working and studying, like balancing those two are already stressful and thinking about where to get your funds, given the restrictions as an international student, given the cost of living, given the minimum wage, it would be really stressful. So please, 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 before coming here, I advise that you secure your funds already, or at least you know where to get your funds for your tuition fee. Now, working in campus. So I was, I had an opportunity to work in campus as well because I uh, am a peer tutor. So with peer tutor, I am paid $15 per hour and I'm assigned a student. And each week, uh, we are only allowed for a maximum of two hour session. So you could imagine how much uh, it will only earn me. So for a week, uh, that I'm expecting a $30 um, salary or compensation from the college for being a peer tutor. And for a month, it is about $120. <laughs> so it's not a lot. But of course, it is still an extra cash if you want. So uh, as I was saying earlier, opportunities in campus are there, but there are certain limitations like being a peer tutor. You cannot have a session more than two hours per student. So if you want to earn more as a peer tutor, then you should have more student tutoring. And that is on, also dependent on how much um, how many students applied or wants to have a peer tutor. So those are a lot of, there are a lot of factors regarding, you know, this um, kind of opportunity. <laughs> My salary, or I would say honorarium from the college usually comes in my mailing uh, address and it will come uh, in a form of a check. So if, for example, I did a peer tutoring, right? And I am expecting $120 uh, honorarium, I will receive $120 honorarium 
in a form of a check. But it doesn't mean that there will be no deductions in that $120. What happens is when you are filing your taxes for the year, you are required to submit a T4A. So a T4A uh, is for those who are self-employed. And you have to file your CPP contributions and EI contributions separately. So although you have your checks in full amounts, unlike when you are receiving salary from your employers, um, you will still have to pay the government your contributions from your CPP and EI from the check that you receive in full amount. So yeah, <laughs> that is also one thing to consider when you are, um, if you receive something like opportunities like that. If you'd ask me how much you should allocate if you receive a like check from the school or a full amount of cash, I do not know <laughs> because um, my friend has an aunt who assists us with our taxes and hopefully I can get a hold of her and explain some of those taxes stuff <laughs> on a video. So please watch out for that. When you're projecting your income here in Canada, there are several things that you have to recognize. One would be um, your deductions because as your earning grows, your deduction also increases. Second would be uh, it's not because you are eligible to work for full time, you will get your hours. In the Philippines, I know that it is most of the jobs are salary based, but here it is hourly based. So you will work depending on the number of hours that is available. Sometimes, like during, there was a time where I have like two jobs because um, I'm not getting my hours on my first job, so I am required to get another job because, of course, <laughs> I have my expenses as well. So, um, when you're projecting your income, you have to consider all those and not be fixated on like, okay, uh, it says here that I am earning this much and I can work for this hours. It would all depend on the current situation. So again, it is very helpful and it's, it would be very, not easy, but it will save you so much if you already have your finances prepared before coming here in Canada. I wanted to briefly explain GIC or Guaranteed Investment Certificate here on this video because it's also related to funds and uh, managing your finances, but I feel like it's a whole other topic on its own and uh, it'll be too much for this video already. So please watch out for that. I'm just going to create another one, another set of video for that. But yeah, <laughs> I hope this video enlightened you in a way and help you prepare as you plan to study here in Canada. Uh, thank you so much for your questions and for those who prompted or triggered this video <laughs> with your questions. I really appreciate them so much. If you have questions, please uh, feel free to put them on the comment section or reach out to me on my Instagram account, Alberta. Yeah, just scan the QR code right there. <laughs> it will take you to my Instagram account. All right. Thank you so much again for your support. Uh, now we've reached, I saw that we're already over 700 subscribers. So thank you so much. I didn't expect that it will come so far. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah, I appreciate your continued support. And yeah, I think that's it for me. Bye for now.